Okay, this is getting a little personal um, because, yes, I am going to do the Android benchmark today, but I also want to do a personal project. Uh, a, actually, it's a project for a client that my team and I are building. And the reason I'm a little bit serious today and not super, super thrilled is because, well, uh, if you've seen my Xcode project, then you know that the money I spent on this Mac Studio, it's an Ultra M1 Ultra chip. It didn't seem to have really given me much gains over the MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip. In fact, the MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip ran my mobile application build for iOS faster than the Mac Studio. So I'm going to do the same thing for Android now. It is a cross-platform application built with native script. So there is the native iOS build for it and there's their native Android build for it. So I'm hoping I'm going to win somewhere here. But before I do that, let's do the actual benchmark. I've got three machines here. This is the MacBook Pro Intel Core i9. This is the MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip in it, Apple Silicon. And this is the new Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra chip in it. All three of these machines are actual my machines that I've used over time. I first had this one, then I switched to this one, and a few months later, this one came out. So that's what I'm planning to use now. But I'm not as thrilled about it as I used to be. Anyway, here's the project that we're going to be building, and you might have seen me build this before. This is by Yojik. That's his GitHub account right there, and this is the Android Studio benchmark. I'll link to this down below. You can check it out. And this collects information, including this handy little Google Doc where people are entering their results for their benchmark. So you can go check it out and see what people are getting for their machines. He also tells you how to set it up and how to run it in case you're interested in doing that yourself. Now, what I'm working with here is Android Studio Bumblebee, all the same version 2021.1.1 on all three of these machines. I'm going to open the project and the instructions tell you that you have to wait while Gradle does its initial compilation first. Then you go to view, tool windows, terminal. This pops open the terminal and you can type in Gradle or Gradle W, however you want to say that. The first command you give it is clean so that we start with a clean slate and then assemble debug. This will create a debug build. Okay, I've set that command up on all these machines. He also mentions that the first time you run this is going to take a little bit longer and then the subsequent runs are going to be faster. So without further ado, let's get the Schwarzenegger. Those that are not new to the channel know what this is. And uh, we got our fingers on the end and going to line up the enter keys. Basically, this is a race, right? So we're gonna see who's gonna be faster. And let's go. This build doesn't take so long, so not like the Xcode tests that took a really long time to build. Now, while it's building, you can tell the Intel machine is already at 3200 RPM, the fan, 3300, and it's almost at 100 degrees Celsius. And for those of you that are wondering, you've been asking me, 100 degrees Celsius is a lot. It's like boiling, right? Well, luckily, our computers are not made of water, so it's not going to boil. It's uh, the temperature of the actual silicon. So that's silicon. It's meant to withstand high temperatures, and it's not going to boil. So don't worry. But yeah, it is pretty hot in there. It is almost 100 degrees Celsius. And that's one of the issues uh, with the Intel machines and why things take such a long time because they heat up. Right now we're almost at 5,000 RPM and uh, the machine begins to throttle. Now here with the M1 Max, we're at 1500 RPM. So also the fan is going, it's not gonna get quite as high, but with the Mac Studio, what I've noticed is the machine remains cool throughout and it never hits above 1400 RPM. The fan always stays pretty much the same. So. Everything is done now. That did not take long at all. And here are the numbers. Two minutes and eight seconds on the Intel machine. One minute, 32 seconds on the M1 Max MacBook Pro. And one minute and 19 seconds on the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra chip. So far, I'm pretty happy with the numbers. Let's do that one more time just to get an average score and let's go. By the way, while we wait for the results, let me just take the opportunity to thank the new members that have joined in the last couple weeks. Thank you so much for your support. There is a join button down there next to the subscribe button and next to the like button. If you do like this video, I'd appreciate a like. Thanks. Okay, Sergey, who is the creator of that repository, was right. It is much faster the second time around. One minute, 13 seconds on the Intel machine, 59 seconds on the the M1 Max and 51 seconds on the M1 Ultra. So far, so good. We are getting better numbers. Not two times faster though, even though this is a multi-core build, it's not two times faster on the M1 Ultra. Kind of was hoping for that, but I guess 
that's what we got. I do want to run this one more time because the numbers significantly dropped. So I want them to stabilize a little bit before we go on to building my project. Well, okay, one minute and 10 seconds on the Intel, 54 seconds on the M1 Max, and 51 seconds on the M1 Ultra. Seems like the machine that's not changing the most is the M1 Ultra, and these two are actually getting shorter and shorter. So not a huge difference there between the desktop and the laptop for Apple Silicon. Now let's move on to my client's project, which is a mobile application written in native script. As I mentioned before, it is a cross platform app. Therefore it has iOS targets and Android targets, and it does produce native applications when it's built. NS clean will clean the project. The NS for those of you that are wondering is the native script CLI. And then I'm going to use the time command to time a build. So that's time ns build android you know what we'll use schwarzenegger again he's back and they're off <laughs> hit that at the same time okay i can see the mac studio is a little bit ahead followed closely by the m1 max i think i know what's gonna happen and i hope that the mac studio will come out on top here but I'm not promising anything i don't know yet now this is a real world application a real application that's actually in the app stores both ios and android and because it's a real app it's got more than just an android build inside of it it actually has a node build to compile typescript into javascript and then use webpack to bundle all that together and then it's got the compilation of all these plugins that are native um, android plugins with javascript layers on top to expose them to javascript so it's building all that stuff and compiling the android at the very end and i think we are done <laughs> okay this makes me happy i'm more happy about this than i was with the xcode build all right intel macbook pro finished that build in one minute and 47 seconds then my new MacBook Pro, the one that I just bought in October, finished it in 1 minute 28 seconds. So that's already 20 second savings, 19. Pretty good. And then the Mac Studio with M1 Ultra finished it in 1 minute and 14 seconds, saving me another, what, 14 seconds? I know it's not much, but this builds up over time. Now, that was not the Android build, that was the entire build of the entire application. The Android only build is reported down here, and that's uh, 19 seconds, 19.3 for the M1 Ultra, and 21.1 for the M1 Max, and 25.7 for the Intel machine. So not a huge improvement of the Android build, but it's a pretty significant improvement overall for the entire application, which has a stage that is a single core build, and it also has a multi-core stage build. So together, it adds up. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing for more videos like this. Thanks again for watching folks, and I'll see you next time.